Good morning, Pat Zemer here with MagnaWave, welcoming you to this Tuesday morning edition of the MagnaWave Office Hours. I'm Pat Zemer. I'm the CEO of MagnaWave and founder of MagnaWave. We, I've been doing PEMF therapy since 2002. Uh, the MagnaWave brand was begun in uh, late 2006 and 2007. So we've got pretty extensive background in PEMF therapy, various low power machines, high power machines uh, across the board. So if you have any questions with regard to PEMF, I'm happy to answer them for you uh, at this time and uh, whatever those questions may be. We can talk about machines, we can talk about protocols, we can talk about uh, guidelines, we can talk about training, we can talk about studies, we can talk about whatever it is that you'd like to discuss with regard to PEMF therapy. Now you can put your questions in the chat box uh, right here on the Facebook page and I'd be happy to uh, take a look at them at that point and uh, have them or if you wish you could simply give me a call at 502-599-9722 and we can converse uh, about whatever questions or topics that you would like to talk about. Again that's 502-599-9722. Uh, please remember to mute your spe speakers when you do that because there is a delay uh, from uh, this posting to Facebook so we're happy to uh, answer your questions in any way uh, that you would like. So let me get started here this morning. Uh, hey Tim, thanks for being with us today. We have some other folks with us, so uh, uh, chime in if you'd like to share this with your friends, uh, if you would, because there could be folks uh, elsewhere uh, who would like to uh, ask some questions as well. Hi Wendy, good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. We're glad we're glad you're here. So let me uh, get started with a couple of things. Uh, my webinar last Thursday. Uh, was with Max Champy and uh, Phil Catalano, a NASA scientist, uh, regarding the C60 product. And that is available here on this page. It will also be on YouTube later today, so if you'd like to view it. And it will also be in our pod on, on our podcast page uh, on iTunes. So uh, take a look at that, uh, whatever's the most convenient way for you to view that particular webinar. Uh, so, question is, any tips for someone who wants to use this product, being C60, uh, but is having major digestive problems after starting it? Uh, tried the olive oil base, just started with the avocado base, uh, starting very conservative, really want to use it. Uh, great question, and what some people have done, and it could be the fact that you, you know, you're just putting the oil, uh, the in your mouth, basically with the dropper full, with dropper fills, and uh, under the tongue, or as it may be on your tongue, and you. So when you swallow that, you're simply putting the direct oil, uh, certainly into your system, and I guess in some digestive uh, tracts, in some people who may be more sensitive, that could cause some irritability. Uh, what I would recommend at that point, what some people do, is they put it on a cracker <clears throat> or they put it on a little piece of bread. So you can just put the dropperfuls on a piece of bread or a cup, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, on the bread and then eat the bread, which will help the digestive system deal with that in a non, as in not so direct fashion. So you could put it on a cracker, uh, put it on a piece of bread would be a great way to, to have it. You could even if you wanted to, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's oil, so it's going to break down. But if you wanted to uh, put it on, if you were having some bacon or something and you wanted to put it on the bacon and eat the bacon, you could do whatever. It's still going to come uh, into the system. It's just a matter of introducing it in a fashion that is comfortable and tasteful for the, for the person who is uh, having a great question. And I hope that that uh, helps uh, get the question answered. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, again, if you have a question, folks, just put it in the chat box on the Facebook page uh, that we're watching at this point, and I'll get a hold of it and be happy to answer the question for you. There have been some questions uh, with regard to uh, testing and and those types of things, uh, FD, not FDA, but uh, uh, studies different studies that have been conducted. And we have conducted studies uh, at MagnaWave, uh, participated in studies using our devices specifically. You know, there's a lot of studies out there that have been conducted over the years with all types of PEMF devices and, and all types of settings and, and Hertz settings and frequency settings and the whole, the whole nine yards. And we can get into a whole conversation there if someone, if you wish. But uh, what we have done is there have been three studies specifically at this point that have been conducted 
and published utilizing the MagnaWave equipment. Uh, I have uh, sent those uh, to Nick, who is uh, helping me out this morning. And uh, Nick, if you can, post those in the uh, in the comment section of the Facebook page if people would like to go there and take a look at those studies that were conducted with our equipment. One deals with knee pain, knee issues, the other with lumbar issues of the back, and the third one has to do with prostate inflammation uh, and treatment utilizing, utilizing our equipment. So there are studies there, and we don't necessarily totally rely on other studies that were conducted uh, because it's tough. If someone is using a low-power piece of equipment or they're using a specific setting, then someone says, well, yeah, you've got a study that says this, but does your equipment match that particular study? And so we'd like to we'd like to do our own. As you know, there are other studies uh, in the works at this point uh, at Henry Ford Hospital, University of Miami, and the uh, Los Angeles Veterans Hospital. Uh, let's see, do we have a question? Oh, Nick will put the questions up. Uh, the study is up here in just a bit, so that'll be great for folks to be able uh, to have a look at them. Thanks, Nick, for getting back. Uh, any other questions, folks, just post it in the uh, chat box, and I would be happy to have a look at them. There, uh, another question that I received, is there class in Calgary you can take uh, interested in massage? She's, this particular person is in massage and would like to go to school for PEMF and MagnaWave. Well, we don't specifically, we have some people in Canada who can perform the training and, and aid with hands-on training. Uh, but the, all the training for our particular product is online and totally available with the testing, uh, discussion, and the, and the whole nine yards. So it's available online for anyone who would like to have it wherever they happen to be in the United States or around the world um, at this time. And we're working to have it translated so it could be available in multiple languages as well. So a great question uh, on the training. Any other questions? Just put them up there and I'd be happy to answer them. I'll stay as long as we can until the 10 o'clock hour when I have another meeting to attend. Uh, but if you, if the questions are not there, then I'll say have a great day. <laughs> we'll be back again later. Okay, let's see. Um, by any chance, will you be doing any clinical trials for heart patients? Um, well, there are no particular clinical trials from our position uh, for heart patients uh, at this point. Um, if the question is, is MagnaWave safe or is MagnaWave used or is PEMF used around the heart and can it be beneficial? Well, you know, we don't treat specific conditions. We simply set the body up with oxygenation and blood flow to be in a position to better heal itself. Could this prove beneficial for someone who's having issues, many different issues? I always maintain that good, well oxygenated, healthy blood, uh, which MagnaWave and PEMF allows to be facilitated, uh, can work miracles and uh, can be very beneficial to uh, any whatever ailment uh, someone may have or be experiencing. So, uh, but specifically we don't have any specific tests in line. Great idea and we can take a look uh, to see what aspects uh, there may be. I know that folks, my wife in particular, who I'm with all the time, uh, has had m multiple issues uh, with her heart over the years. She's had an aneurysm. She had, uh, she's had two holes in her hearts that needed to be repaired. She has a stent uh, in her heart, and uh, she looks great and feels great and does great, uh, but she's had those issues and has treated herself regularly uh, over the years uh, with no problems. And in fact, uh, a couple of things have, have occurred that, that have been astounding to people with regard to her aneurysm. Uh, and it's a long, interesting story that we could discuss at some point. But uh, so it, it's never been an issue and she's cleared that with her doctor. Certainly, if you have a heart condition and you want to discuss or you want to have MagnaWave, uh, there are doctors now clearing MagnaWave with specific types of uh, defibrillators and, and pacemakers that if they want to treat their hips or their knees, they're allowing that to happen because they've greatly up improved the uh, the devices not to be affected um, adversely uh, because of PEMF or anything that could affect the power units and so forth. But you always want to check with your physician uh, when you're using anything like this to make sure that, that whatever you may be experiencing is uh, good to go and you're, you're all right uh, to use it. Good morning, Jessica. Thanks for, for being with us. Uh, so the great question, and again, if you have any questions, just, oh, here we go. Here's a question. Let me take a look at it here and see, uh, pull it up. 
um, over here. Let's see. Let me pull this down. I've been working with two different dogs with arthritis, both limp and hold up a paw almost uh, most of the time. I've treated twice a week for five weeks. While both joys enjoy this, while both dogs enjoy the session, relaxing, we have seen no real improvement in movement. Treat the whole body and spend extra time on the affected limb. Anything else I can do? Great question, Wendy. Uh, and that's a tough one. You know, when you're dealing with it, it all deals with the length of time that someone has had a, a condition. You can relieve the inflammation, relieve the pain. Uh, that we experience as a result of that, but if the if the buildup of calci calcium and the damage to the area is so so been around so long and so severe that it physically limits anything from happening, then you may not get the increased movement or the improved movement that you're looking for over time. Uh, you could conceivably get it. Of course, you've been doing it twice a week for five weeks. And again, both do dogs appear to be in looking at it. So maybe you need to look at what's happening. Are the dogs more comfortable? Uh, are they, are they living more comfortably and functioning, uh, better in a more comfortable fashion? Then you're see, then you're seeing some result that is pleasing. Again, it's the length of time, uh, and the physical aspect, the anatomic, uh, aspect of of what's going on I always if something is anatomical that's causing a problem then we all we can do is relieve it can we necessarily change it or reverse it not necessarily if something is anatomical but yet the big problem comes from the inflammation that was caused if we can get rid of the inflammation we might be able to keep the problem at bay for a period of time and again i hate to talk out talk about <laughs> to deal with uh, what my, my what my wife um, is uh, is has dealt with over the years, but she's had some herniated discs and some issues, and uh, we've had to uh, deal with them. And she's got to the situation now that because of continued treatments, she gets relief for three or four weeks at a time before she needs uh, additional treatments uh, for what uh, what she's experiencing. So that's always uh, something that we want to. Uh, want to understand and deal with. Great question, Wendy. Uh, sorry, I may not have given you the answer that you were particularly looking for, but we need to look at what is achieved uh, as the um, sessions go on. And again, talking about like a lumbar situation or a herniated disc, the more you do it, the longer the results last. And that's what I was saying about my wife. We did it a whole bunch of days in a row, almost 90 days, uh, to get her to where she had relief for three to four weeks with just one or two treatments. And that's been going on now for 12 years. And uh, so that's a good thing. And uh, we need to understand that. And you're welcome. You're welcome, Wendy. Okay, so let's see. Um, here's another question. Can anyone tell me what amperage draw is from the semi uh, on high per minute or whatever time period? I have a barn owner who is concerned about electric bills rising with horses being treated. Well, it takes no more power uh, than may be used by a light bulb or two to power uh, these devices, um, they, they because the pulses are very quick, uh, they're very short in duration, and it really doesn't take a lot of power. You can power these with a battery. Um, so if you had a little battery pack and you wanted to do it, that that's what that'd be one way of getting around this particular situation. Some people, if they just get it in their mind that you're going to bring this device into the into the barn or into the place wherever they are, and you're going to treat for three or four hours in a day. Um, and they think that that's raising their light bill or their electric bill. The way to handle that is to uh, facilitate with a battery pack, uh, which we can talk to you about helping you do that. And you can run it on a battery, and, and uh, then they can decide, decide at the end of the month. My guess is they've got something else going on that is impacting the electric uh, output at the, at the facility uh, in place. But these devices virtually use very little power. They operate on 110. Uh, again, not much more power than a light bulb uh, or two to operate the devices. Great question, and it's a question that a lot of people do ask uh, from time to time. Uh, any other questions, folks? Just pop them into the uh, 
into the chat box, and we'd be happy to answer them at that point. If you'd like to give me a call, it's 502-599-9722. Please remember to mute your speakers uh, at that time when you when you do so. A um, little flashing aspect there. <laughs> I get to punch in my button and I forget what I'm doing there. Okay, so uh, another question that I received, horse with uh, cellulitis. Uh, let's see what we got here. Here's a question. Let me pull this up. We'll take a look at it, then we'll come back to the cellulitis question. Question from a practitioner have a client that is 24 and has had about seven concussions, last one being about four years ago. He also suffers from depression and anxiety. I think I can help. Your input on ideas for treatment would be greatly appreciated. Uh, this person has the max. Um, great question. Um, and certainly, you know, Concussions are, you know, certainly a, a, a tricky issue that a lot of people are discussing today. Let's first talk about the the um, the depression and the anxiety. The PEMF therapy, the MagnaWave PEMF, uh, is really very relaxing on the body. It improves the blood flow. It improves the oxygenation. Uh, we've learned, we've found over the years uh, that after use, people have a sense of well-being, which will go a long way to working with depression or anxiety issues. Uh, and when you're talking about a concussion, a bruising, uh, a stimulation to the head or the brain may be required to help things heal. Now, we're talking about a long time ago, so obviously there could be damage there that, again, is anatomical at this point. It's scar tissue. It's damage that's there, and now we have to try to deal with it. Uh, I would say first, with that length of time, we need to deal with the potential de- depression or anxiety. Uh, what we have done with folks who have suffered depression in the past is we simply put the coil over the head, rested it on the shoulders, and treated at a very comfortable setting, basically allowing the signal to go up and down this way into the upper chest and lungs, and then into the head to, again, uh, aid in oxygenation, blood flow, uh, help hopefully get things uh, flowing the way that, that you would want them to provide a sense of well-being. And we've seen that in several cases relieve uh, depression. We had one client that, that we were treating for a stroke uh, that had happened seven years or several years earlier. And we and we were working on their speech capabilities and we improved their speech capability, this person's speech capability, by probably 40%. Uh, they're able to make full sentences on occasion and be able to say names and recognize things. Uh, they could hear and understand perfectly, but had trouble making sentences. So we were helped uh, deal with that, and we had the approval of the uh, Fraser Rehab Center where this person had spent years with speech cognition and they took them as far as they could. And then we took them over the next couple of years a bit further up to 40% improvement. Then we were finished and we said, hey, uh, we've done all we can do. And we were told, no, you don't understand. Uh, he's he's happy. He's no longer depressed. You've given him a sense of well-being with what's going on with this type of therapy. Uh, another client who is was diagnosed as clinically uh, non-responsive depression had had electrotherapy, had had voice, uh, you know, cognition, speaking therapy, had had. Uh, other types of physical therapy, drug therapy, nothing appeared to be working uh, in this clinically non-responsive non, uh, depression situation, and we began treating, much like I said we did. We got to the point that we would take a coil very lightly and place it on various sides of the head and, and treat very lightly and comfortably, and we watched this person go from a state that, that when she would walk into the office drooping and not smiling and hanging her head to the point that that she uh, regained her life, was able to go back to work, was able to live a day a normal day to day activity happily and, and uh, but it was a situation that required the continual activity of being treated uh, and this has been going on now uh, for mm, I'd say maybe two and a half three years uh, for this person and eventually uh, purchased their own machine so she could treat herself at home as many days as she needed to uh, and as often as she needed to and it, it uh, in those types of situations again it's been very effective. Uh, for those for depression and anxiety. So that's where I would go first. Great question. 
in, in that regard is to work on the well-being uh, in a in a concussion type of situation again you want to talk to the physicians that you're working with but if it's if it's just occurred and they want circulation they want good blood movement then the placing of the coil over the shoulders to help the overall blood flow of the body could be very beneficial should the doctors understand and, and want to participate to helping the blood flow to the areas of injury and potentially maybe uh, helping the uh, body better heal itself and get things back to normal. Uh, great questions. Uh, again, the length of time certainly has an effect on, on what we can expect, and that's like with an athletic injury. If someone hurts themselves in an athletic event, the more rapidly you can begin to treat the area to keep the inflammation at bay, to allow the, the blood flow to be improved or good or remain good, then the better response you're going to get with the helping the body heal that particular uh, indication itself. Uh, so if you wait a long period of time, inflammation can take over, inflammation can become a problem. A lot of, a lot of Injuries are f f further exacerbated by the presence of inflammation, and then you have to get rid of the inflammation so that, again, the area can be better prepared to work on and heal itself. Great questions. Uh, thanks for posting that, and I hope that uh, that, that helped. Um, and I'm glad that everybody's here with us this morning so we can answer the questions uh, that you may have. Again, just place them in the chat box, and we'd be happy to take a look at them. Uh, the question the question I had received, a horse has cellulitis on a leg. Definitely going to treat the whole body with extra focus on, on the area. Uh, how long should I spend treating? And that reminds me of another question that I received last night. How long should I spend treating the area? And another horse has DSLD, which is degenerative suspensory ligament disease. How should I treat that? Well, certainly, uh, the first one, when you're dealing with cellulitis, you want to improve the circulation to the area. You want to improve the blood flow to the area. Overall body treatment will give the body good oxygenation and blood flow for several hours. And then treating the area itself uh, can help move things around and move things out to uh, potentially aid in the uh, healing or the aid in the how the body deals with that particular types of situation. With the DSLD, the degenerative uh, suspensory ligament uh, disease, if something is degenerating and, you, and good blood flow and good oxygenation can slow that, that's what we get into a lot of times with arthritis. It's a buildup of calcification in the body. Well, if you've got good circulation, then you can maybe slow down that buildup. So if you've got a degenerative situation going on, you can potentially, by good healthy blood, with good healthy blood and blood flow, uh, slow that down and, and to figure out what's causing it and then deal with it from that perspective. Let the doctors be able to do that. But can we aid in, in, uh, in slowing something like that down? Potentially. Could be a result. Uh, I don't know, but you can certainly look at it from, from that perspective. Good questions, uh, and I hope that's helped. They help, I hope that helps uh, with how you understand those questions. Okay, let's take another one here. I look at this one. Um, a lot of people asking about upcoming MagnaCon event. They want to know which days are open to the public and what events are for our practitioners. Great question. And again, MagnaCon is taking place this year in June, June 13th, 14th, and 15th. Uh, the Wednesday night of the uh, 13th, let me turn this off here. Wednesday night of the uh, 13th is open uh, to the vendor area. Uh, so if you want to come and see machines and talk to the vendors about the different machines that are available, uh, the different supplements or different products that work well with MagnaWave as complementary applications, will be going on uh, Wednesday night and then the vendor area will be open certainly all day on Thursday. So the public is available to come to uh, MagnaCon on Wednesday night and Thursday for the discussions. There will be uh, speakers all day Thursday talking about many and various aspects of PEMF and MagnaWave and so you can hear those people interact with the practitioners that are there to get questions asked uh, answered. Nothing better than to speak to someone who's been doing it for a few years and, and to really get your questions asked. So as a doctor or someone wanting to be a practitioner or someone just wanting to use it for their personal use but they want to really get some good understanding of it, come on down to MagnaCon and so 
know what will happen is the folks that come for the Wednesday and Thursday, uh, as well as the practitioners who come for all three days, uh, will be all the talks and everything going on on Thursday, and then we'll be going to Churchill Downs Thursday evening, which is a great fun time people have had. We go for dinner. Uh, there are open bars for our uh, cash bars, whatever, for folks to come and enjoy the racing, uh, enjoy some fun at Churchill Downs under the spires. Uh, and watch the racing live, watch the Magna Wave Classic that we run each year at that point in time uh, at, on that evening. So that's what's available to the general public. Friday will be for practitioners only, uh, people who own machines, and to come and to have hands-on training in people, small animals, uh, uh, large animals, horses, and so forth to uh, interact with the trainers that will be there and the doctors and the practitioners and myself and uh, my staff to, to talk and learn hands-on on Friday. And then Friday evening is the MagnaWave uh, this year. It's a Derby Gala, uh, finest Derby hats and dress for the men and women. And I have a good time and we have some... Uh, uh, gambling going on, you know, the, the fake money gambling. We have a lot of fun. A lot of uh, prizes will be awarded that evening uh, at the uh, Derby Eve Gala. And anyone who signs up to attend and join us this year for MagnaCon will be entered into a drawing to win a uh, Pulse Pro machine. We're giving a Pulse Pro machine away to an attendee of the of the uh, function, so we're looking forward to that, and then we think that will uh, generate some interest among those who are attending. So again, Magnaway, June 13th, 14th, and 15th, uh, the hotel rates are available, and there's hotels all around if you want a different accommodation. Uh, transportation is available all over all over the place, uh, if you, so you don't necessarily have to rent a car if you're coming in. There is a shuttle from the airport to the facility at the Holiday Inn where we'll be having it this year. We may outgrow it. This may be the last year there because it's growing each year and uh, we're getting more excited about people participating and learning and enjoying the, and being a part of the MagnaWay family. Great place to come if you want to come and spend the weekend. I mean, my gosh, the Muhammad Ali Museum, the the, the uh, Hillary and Bradsby uh, bat, Baseball Bat Museum, the, the Frazier Museum downtown, all, the Bourbon Tour. There's a Bourbon Tour that originates right out of the hotel. So if you wanted to go on a Bourbon Tour over the weekend, you could do that. And so just a lot of activities in beautiful Louisville, Kentucky that you can enjoy, that you can enjoy by attending um, um, MagnaCon 2018. Great question. Thank you for reminding me to uh, talk about it by asking that particular uh, that particular question. Okay, let me see. I believe we have another question. Let me pull it up here and take a look at it. Jennifer, I'm about to start working on a horse that tore a ligament in her stifle Saturday. Other than treating the stifle, what would you suggest to treat the entire body? I want to make sure we have we prevent laminitis. Well, certainly our theory, uh, but Jennifer, great question. Our theory behind treating the whole body People, this has been a point of discussion uh, over the years, is by treating the whole body, what we're doing is setting up the oxygenation and the improved blood flow in the whole body. Where's that blood going to go? It's going to go to areas of the body that are suffering, that are dormant, that have issues. So we're going to basically support those areas uh, over over time with by treating the whole body. To concentrate on the specific area kind of is kind of like painting a, a bad place on the wall. You cover it up, you make it feel better, and you help that particular area to be better facilitated to heal itself with good inflammation reduction and blood flow to the area. I always equate it as kind of like an accident on the highway. You get all the rubbernecking going on, and or you can't get up the ramp, or everything slows down to a crawl. What we want to do around that area is try to get things moving through that particular area quickly and efficiently, and then get the overall support of the of the system improved for the duration of the improved blood flow, which could be a day to two or three days. That improved blood flow can help nourish that particular area after you treat. So great question. I would do the overall body, but then I would concentrate on the area itself. 10 to 12 minutes on the area, depending on the device. Uh, 6 to 8 minutes with the max, potentially 10 to 12, 15 with the semi device and get the good uh, work on the area. I would treat maybe the body every other day and the area every day if that, if that's, if that works for the client. And again, keep in mind that we treat as long as function continues to improve 
and then along as necessary to maintain the function that you that you've improved and you've uh, allowed to uh, potentially heal itself. So once the overall situation is good, then you're you're good to stop or whatever. But as long as it continues to improve, then if client providing uh, keep things up so you can return the animal or that person or small animal to the best condition uh, that the people will want because the animal will work on itself if you make the if you allow the blood to be healthier and uh, and happier so I see that we put up let me pull this up here to take a look at this uh, these are the I mean here we go uh, covering me up here a little bit but here are the studies uh, with the prostate study the herniated disc and the knee osteoarthritis studies uh, that you can take a look at and then an overview of the osteoarthritis study, much more succinct, quick overview of that particular study. We want you to know uh, what's out there and, and what's available for you to uh, learn more and understand more about our this wonderful magnawaving PEMF uh, therapy that is available uh, to you. So I received a question uh, last evening. Uh, Sandy asked the question, um, she's dealing with someone in barrel racing, and, and this would be the same thing with most any te- any type of situation that you're dealing with, uh, whether it's a person, small animal, or a horse or cattle, whatever the situation may be. Uh, but specifically, when dealing with racehorses, and in this case, barrel racing situations, the customer wanted to have the horse treated uh, at race time or as close to race time as possible, and the question was, should I do that? What are my... Uh, what am I facing when I do that? Well, I learned early on that every animal is different when you talk about racing and performing. <clears throat> and and basically, we don't want to, uh, it, it, it's up to the animal. Some animals perform better when the edge is off and they're relaxed and they can just approach it and naturally go. Other animals need that edge. They need that little, uh, call it excitement or whatever it may be, to to push on and and go forward. So uh, what I learned was if you treat uh, some animals just before they go to the ring, and I've got two specific uh, uh, examples here, and you take the edge off. I had a jumping horse, uh, very sore. She wanted it to be treated, treated the horse. The horse loved it, was very relaxed, went to the ring, and didn't much care about being in the ring. Just didn't really want to jump, didn't really want to do anything because the horse was too relaxed. The next day, the horse performed like a champion that it had never been able to achieve. It was just incredible. And the woman eventually, or not eventually, immediately uh, wanted a machine for her own use to treat her horses. But we learned at that point that, and she learned, she treated her horse the day before the particular event with that with that horse. We learned the same with racehorses. Uh, and, and so I learned that you don't want to necessarily treat every horse right before the race. So what we do with racehorses is we treat them before they breeze. So you can treat the day they breeze and see how they do. Do they go out and is the edge gone and they don't do as well or is the edge there and they actually perform better with that short time of treatment? And then we would judge when is the best time. Maybe we'd do it a second time at a breeze, but then we would decide when is the best time to treat that particular horse. The day before, two days before, the day of the race. I've had jumping horses when I was actively on the road treating. Them. They're under saddle, getting ready to go to the ring, and we're treating their feet, or we're treating their shoulder, and then they go. And they, they, these particular horses, this is what the owner wanted, this is how the horse performed its best, and away they went. Have the same thing when it comes to small animals, and really people. Uh, Tony Robbins, the uh, great motivational speaker, charges himself up, he calls it, gets charged up with a good strong uh, PMF magnawave type of treatment just before he goes on stage to uh, just get him moving and get him exhilarated and good blood flow and energy to go. And uh, that's what works best for him. Someone else, uh, myself, uh, I've been doing this for years and years and years, but I'm a little better to be relaxed. Uh, before I go. So I would probably use it uh, in more of a relaxing situation to relax me a little bit so I don't get nervous. And as often as you do this, you can ask any athlete. They go into the game, they're nervous. When you get ready to go on live or go speak before a group of people, you're nervous. And so you want to use whatever you're using to be most appropriate for your personal type situation. So I told her she wants to not necessarily first time treat just before the race. 
do it in, in practice and see how the horse does in practice. Then come and you know when to treat that particular horse in racing conditions, performance conditions, whatever the, whatever the case may be. Uh, great questions uh, so far, and I really am thankful for that. Let me see. Um, yep, no other questions at this point. If you have a question, please uh, put it in the chat box and I would be happy to approach it. If I don't have the answer to the question, I've got plenty of doctors who run our private group that will be more than happy to answer the question so I can bring the response back to you uh, at, at a later date or post it here on Facebook or wherever it may be uh, for your uh, perusal and uh, learning capabilities. We like to, one of our deals here is, is to be transparent. One of our deals is to answer the questions that people ask of us to be there to support you and help you uh, in your business or in your personal use of our equipment and our type of therapy that we believe in and, and are very passionate um, about providing. To that end, I had quite a discussion with a customer uh, this last week talking about uh, what's out there in the marketplace. What do you have to, to uh, know that, that your equipment is safe? And there's, you know, you go to the Internet and there's, there's all kinds of information and uh, people will disseminate information uh, against their competitors uh, that in many in many cases can be damaging to the competitors or at least damaging to the product uh, that would scare somebody or, or whatever. And, and so from our perspective, and we look at this, we take this seriously, and we're one of the few companies and factories that approach it from this perspective, but our digital equipment and our, our even our analog equipment over the years has, has definitely been included in safety testing, uh, has had CE approvals in Europe. Uh, we are certainly working uh, to be FDA approved in the United States. Uh, that's where these studies are being beneficial and the additional studies. Uh, we're one of the only companies uh, today that uses our own studies uh, to support what we're saying and, and what we're doing. Our digital equipment currently that's going to be uh, uh, used for the FDA approval has gone through very rigorous safety testing, which is required uh, for FDA approval, and which is required if you want to export your equipment out of the United States for human use. And uh, so we really do work to do that uh, for our equipment. And we also certainly carry full product liability coverage for our equipment to uh, just step up, which is very expensive to, uh, number one, the testing process can, can cost thousands of dollars. And I don't mean five thousands or ten thousands i'm talking about fifties and sixties thousands of dollars per unit <clears throat> to safety test and to do that and and we do that on uh, all of our equipment is in some form of ta safety testing to achieve the best limits we can on uh, what we're providing to you our customers that that's very important to us and we like to uh, we like to do that and uh, and that's just the way we like to operate. We want to provide the best equipment we can in, in the best condition uh, that it can be. And 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 recently there was, uh, and it's it's amazing how people will will do things. And I just, I mean, you got me going here all of a sudden. I got a couple minutes here uh, when people will say they have the only piece of equipment in the world that will control two uh, attachments at the same time in a yellow box, and. Yeah, it may be the only piece in the world in a in a particular color box, but we have devices that will control that, that will operate two attachments. We have a device, the Wave Pro, that will operate two attachments independently. It's two machines in one box, and uh, so it will operate two attachments totally independently at five different power levels to achieve what someone needs to do with two attachments. And so, again, I try to be uh, straightforward and not trying to pull smoke or blow smoke or create smoke and mirrors. I try to present it exactly as it is. Uh, so you can have your questions answered in any fashion that you wish. Any other questions here? Got just a couple minutes uh, before I have to go to a different meeting uh, that I'd have to love to answer any questions that you may have. Um, I know that there's a lot of things that pop up. There'll be questions all day long uh, that are coming up. Our Thursday uh, webinar, I'm, I'm at a blank on, on names, but it's a, a nice young lady from Kiva. The Courtney is her name, uh, the Kentucky Indiana Volleyball Association that we're working with closely to, uh, and, and the various college coaches involved there to show and to demonstrate and work with their athletes. They have a lot of shin issues, ankle issues, certainly hip issues in volleyball. I mean, they're on the floor, they're up, they're 
it just it's a very strenuous, tough game. And uh, we're working closely with Kiva, one of the leading uh, volleyball uh, training facilities in the nation. Uh, I think they've had something like 15 national championships uh, for the Kiva teams. And they've had players go off to very prestigious and, and leading schools all over the country. In fact, I was working with a young lady uh, last week at, at Kiva uh, who is uh, a junior in high school. And she's had a full ride scholarship since she was a freshman. Uh, at, at going to, uh, uh, I believe it's Ohio State. And so there's just incredible pressure on these young athletes, incredible uh, athletic stress and potential injuries. And so we're showing them how this can help the body position itself to be resilient, to rejuvenate, and to recover from the stress of these athletic endeavors, and in many cases to help the body be set up to better heal itself from the indications that may arise as a result of the stressful uh, situation that they put themselves. And so that'll be Thursday, MagnaWave Office Hours, uh, not MagnaWave Office Hours, the MagnaWave Wellness Webinar uh, will be Thursday. Uh, the schedule time is 2 o'clock. You want to register for that uh, so you certainly uh, get the replay. There, I learned last night there could be a little scheduling conflict there, so it may be have to go go off at, at 1 o'clock on Thursday. But we'll no, notify you and let you know what's going on uh, with the MagnaWave Wellness Webinar Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock. If you've got a topic that you'd like for us to cover on the webinar, uh, more in-depth potentially, uh, we're working to talk with the people from Hope for Cancer, uh, the truth about cancer. Uh, we had a webinar that we did with Pilar Davila, uh, and she deals with a lot of those types of indications. And so if you have a particular topic that you'd like for us to cover and to see what's going on alternatively, uh, we'd be happy to discuss those things. And, and uh, certainly, you know, you always want to talk to your doctor about when you're using any type of new therapy or something for whatever indication uh, that you are approaching. So, um, again, it's been uh, nice being here with you this morning. I see no other questions at this point. Uh, we've been together for about 45 minutes. Great questions today. Thank you for asking them. And, and again, send me any emails if you have a question you'd like for me to answer. Uh, join us on the webinar Thursday. Sign up for Medi MagnaCon June 13th, 14th, and 15th here in Louisville, Kentucky, beautiful Louisville, Kentucky, and a good time for all. We work real hard to have a good time uh, at MagnaCon uh, for all of our practitioners and people interested in being practitioners or just interested in using this equipment for themselves and their own health and wellness uh, in their life. So thanks for being with me this morning. Look forward to